Hello guys, welcome back uh, to our warrior playthrough here. Well, not a playthrough, but we're checking out the artifact weapons. Uh, I already have done Fury Warrior, if you're looking for that video. It is already posted on my channel. It includes a little tutorial of the class hall. A minor one, of course. I don't go through uh, I don't go through everything because they do have a tutorial actually in-game. But today we're going to be going after our second artifact my weapon. Valizion. It is wise to carry more than one weapon to war. Sometimes one will be better suited than another. You should choose another weapon of legend to carry with you, especially against foes so deadly. What say you? Bring us okay, so we're actually going to be going for arms. This video is going to be for Arms Warrior. The first king of the humans, Thoradin, was a mighty ruler and a mighty warrior. He carried with him a greatsword forged by Rykul, empowered by elves, and bloodied on the fields of countless battles. Stromkar, Ender of Wars, was lost with Thoradin. One strong enough to recover the sword would bring to bear a blade unlike any seen in the ages since. So, let's select Tell that. Of your a powerful weapon for a powerful champion of the halls. Let us begin. The first king of the humans, Thoradin, performed many acts of heroism and valor. While on a personal quest near the end of his reign, he stumbled upon the tomb of my brother Tyr and the grave prison of the monstrosity he died fighting. Thoradin unintentionally awoke the beast and gave his life to keep it from escaping. It is Thoradin's sword, Stromkar, that has kept the monster at bay. Retrieve it, and finish what Tyr and Thoradin started. Kill Zakaz the, Cor Zakaj, the Corrupted. I think that's how you say it, Zakaj. So, uh, actually, I was setting up my bars right before this, because I haven't played ARMS since... The Burning Crusade, I think it was. It's been a long time since I played arms. So, if you're seeing, if you're, you know, a warrior expert, um, <clears throat> and you're watching this video, I do apologize if my, you know, rotation isn't perfect, if I don't, <laughs> if I don't seem to know what I'm doing. I'm going to be learning as I, I go. Let's head to Dalaran. Let's head to Dalaran. I am level 102, so my numbers may be a little bit skewed if you're playing your warrior for the first time, uh... You may see a little bit more damage and thinking, well, why don't I do that? I'm just a couple levels above you. I had to do that on my, uh, I had to level up on my warrior so that we could get to these quests. Uh, while we're walking around, or while we're flying from, uh, where we are, if, if this ever loads, I just want to go to the top and run. Oh, oh no. Hopefully Dalaran isn't bugged out. That would be rough. It is It is early in the morning, so usually there's no problems. Here we go. Boom. We're in Dalaran. Of course you can't see me. I need a flying mount, as a matter of a fact. Ooh, but, well, there's no mount named WWW. Where is the O? Oh. oh. Fuck it. I'm just going to pick some random ass flying mount. I guess we're gonna need it. Let's go with the blue riding nether ray, huh? Holy shit. I'm stuck. This is a great start, guys. We're off to a great start. So as you can see, we gotta take the portal to the Dalaran Crater. I think this quest shares the exact same as maybe like the Shadow Priest and the Holy Paladin. It's the same area, as far as I recall. I haven't done this in a while. Of course, if you were playing on your warrior for the first time, you would have to do the whole uh, class hall thing. If you want to see what that is, like I said, you can check out my Fury Warrior video uh, at the beginning to see what would be the precursor uh, to getting this quest. You don't just uh, start by getting this quest. Quest, right away. As you can see, I haven't done anything. I haven't finished up a zone yet. Uh, so we're going to go to Dalaran Crater, which, by the way, by the way, uh, you don't die from the fall anymore, which is super, super sad. It makes me really sad. I know that uh, a lot of people probably think that's awesome, but I used to troll people, especially my friends and my guildies, by sending them to uh, Dalaran Crater. Hey, can I get a portal to Dalaran? Absolutely. You sure as fuck can. But they don't do that anymore. Why can't I, uh... Hmm. I couldn't... Hello? What the hell is the problem there? It's giving me, like, LUA errors. Hopefully, we don't encounter any more of those. 
Excuse me. But so we're going to be heading up. I can't see what is causing the error. Right. Well, <laughs> I can't see what's causing the error right now. I'll have to check it out later. Um, fuck. All right. So we're heading from the Dalaran Crater. You're going to head north, uh, west into Tears Fall Glades, and you'll be heading to the far north, uh, west portion. Why is this? Add handy note. I don't want to add a handy note. What the fuck? Gotta update my add-ons, it appears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it never fails. There's always some problem. So we could just follow this. The Sword of Kings. So you're going to be heading to a lake uh, at the top of... At the northwest corner of Tears Fall Glades. Here we go. Now, now we can see it. Here would be Undercity, obviously, right here. Uh, and this is where we're going. All the way in this corner here. This is where, uh, I guess, Tears Fall is yeah tears fall you won't have the same problem being not being able to see the map here's Thoradin what did why did my fucking bars change I will tell you uh I'll be okay guys uh had an update for LVI had an update for a couple other mods including DVM so I think that was the problem it seems to be working now, so we'll... I'm checking it out here on some these little side mobs to make sure that I'm not, uh... I'm not an idiot. And it doesn't appear that I am. It appears that I've gotten something fixed. So, good. Now we can, uh... Now we can actually do our quest. Which is all we wanted in the first place. Just to be able to do our quest line. So here we go. I'm not quite sure... We press. What does this do again? Focus rage increases our next mortal strike. Good. Let's use that. All right. Let's increase. Increase that to wow. That did a lot of extra damage, didn't it? Okay. And then Colossus strike. Neat. I am Let's jump in here. So you can actually do that while the shit's on cooldown. Sex up to three times. And then you can use an empowered mortal strike. Which is pretty neat. That's okay. You speak to the king. Why? Thanks. Though we have never met before, I sense great courage in your heart. Yes, you are the hero I need. Pretty cool belt there, dude. Long ago, my yearning for knowledge led me here, to a tomb that lies beneath the lake. Within its cold stone walls, I found something long buried. A terrible dark. An ancient evil. <laughs> My men begged me to walk away. I refused. My pride would be my downfall. And theirs. The evil stirred, unleashing death upon us. With my last breath, I drove my blade, Stromka, into the beast's skull. For many ages, the sword has kept the beast from rising again. But now, it stirs once more. So I must ask you to delve into the depths of the tomb and finish what I started. I will go with you to offer what aid I can. Okay, mate. So, you just jump into water here. Swim down. And you can see that this, which is, by the way... Didn't he just say we were going to go? Is he waiting for me to ask him something? I have seen much in life. Okay. Guess not. He just <laughs> he just fucking disappeared. Okay. 
All right, no problem. All right, so you can see uh, this is broken, so this is where we're actually going to hit into the tomb. Um, this is not available to anyone that's not on the quests. Uh, as of right now, you can see it's not open. If you look there on the mini-map, kind of looks like uh, a giant crater, doesn't it? As if something's hidden beneath. So you can see we got a whole bunch when of little I shits here. This antechamber, I knew I'm out of found something momentous. Here was a door so oddly familiar, like a long-forgotten memory. We broke the first seal. Need more rage. Need more rage. Need more rage. Does it cost anything? Oh, it costs 12 rage to do focused rage. I see. I gotta generate some rage here. Don't kill me. There we go. Nice. Let's head in. We gotta get rid of these, it looks like. These tendrils. As I feared, one of the monster's minions has returned. Its presence is corrupting the wards of the tomb and blocking the path. You must destroy the tendrils to draw it out. Drawer? How do we immune to damage? Is there a way to break that? It must be, right? Those tendrils are using dark magic to become immune oh, to you attack. Okay, so you interrupt interrupt it. their casting so you can strike. There we go. So you just use pummel on them and then you can attack. Boy, rage generation is pretty fucking shit on Arms Warrior, isn't it? Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong, I don't know. Holy moly. Is this what generates rage slam? Oh no, a cost rage. What generates rage? Is there a rage generator that I don't know about? I don't feel like there is. Char I mean, charge generates rage, but... I feel like there should be more than that. Otherwise, what are we doing? I mean, I know your auto attacks generate rage, but I thought there might be a rage generator. Apparently not. So, no problem. We're just getting used to what we're doing here. Interrupt all of these. Hi. So I'm knocking me away, shithead. Let's get a big moral strike off here. 57. 57k. Not bad. There it is! Atop the crypt! Prepare yourself! What is it? Oh. Where the fuck is he going? Hey! Stop doing that. You hear me? You stop doing it. Sothos Sothas the Guardian. Alright, we gotta reach the prison chamber, which is down below here. Let's head down in. Perfect. Beat up some more faceless. Get out of my get out of my chamber. This is where my sword is. It's about to give me anal fissures. I mean, void fissures. Same thing. I'm not sold on this spec so far. I mean, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it feels kind of lackluster. It feels like a red. Feels it's like a red pally. Tricks upon the mind. Beware their illusions. It feels like a just another version of a red paladin, standing around waiting for. 
you to be able to do something. Oh, you little shit. This dude skipped leg day. Look at him. Mr. Octopus face. Alright, come on. Die already. Execute. Execute. This is what warriors do, right? You sp spam execute. 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 So here is Zakaj. The site of my final battle. And there lies my foe. Even now, Zakaj struggles for consciousness. You must hurry. There's the blade. Give it to me, baby. Uh huh, uh huh. Alright. Let's go get, let's go claim Stromkar. Do we pick it up first? Yes. I don't know what the name of the items thing is called. No, oh. we are too late. Zakaj has awakened. Oh shit. Um, it looks like a spider crackle demon the thing. Seems slow. Confused. The sword wounds it still. Quickly, strike it down before it recovers completely. Okay. I will do that. Beware. The card grows desperate. He may change his tactics. It ain't gonna matter, because I don't spam and execute. Ha! Get wrecked. You have done what I could not. You defeated Zakaj and lived. You know what needs to be done. Take up the Warbreaker and end the threat of Zakaj once and for all. Sweet. All right, give me that. Give it to me. All right, there we go. And now we have Stromkar. Which is pretty badass. I mean, I love the, uh, I love the weapon. And so, we're going to execute. Finish Sakaj with a powerful, Sakaj with a powerful blow. There we go, and we send him back to At the last, void. I the guess. The nightmare is over. I can finally leave this place and be. Go. I leave my blade to you. Strumkar deserves to be wielded in battle, not locked away in a tomb. It was forged by a master swordsmith and imbued with elven magics. I know not whether being buried in that beast for centuries has affected it, but I trust that it will serve you well. Me too. So there is our artifact ability, it's called Warbreaker, stomp the ground, causing a ring of corrupted spikes to erupt upwards, dealing 41,478 shadow damage, and applying Colossus Smash effect to all nearby enemies. Let's see. So that's what it looks like. That's the little animation for it. Pretty cool. Alright guys, uh, let's go back to Odin. Or actually, we'll just go back to Skyhold. I don't think we have to speak with Odin. Pretty awesome. I love this weapon. I love the weapon's ability. But again, not... Oh yeah, we do have to go talk to Odin. Uh, I'm not sold on the spec itself. Uh, feels slow. It feels like Ret. You know, a little bit slow, a little bit, a little bit boring as compared to some of the new uh, specs that they put out, where it's just, you know, go go go. There's always a button to be pushing. A mighty blade forged by the son of Raikul, enchanted by elven sorcery and quenched in the blood of a, a Sothraxi. It will serve you well, Torag. With it, you will put an end to our enemies. Alright, so... Uh, he's asking me if I want to go get the prot, which will be the next video. Uh, so look for that. But, before we say our goodbyes, we're going to go take a look uh, at the weapon itself. And its traits and stuff. So that you can get an idea of what the, uh, what the traits on it are. In case you're uh, planning on playing a, a warrior alt somewhere down the line. 
you'll be able to do that. You'll have an idea of what's going on. So, of course, we talked about Warbreaker. That's the ability of our weapon. It's on a one minute cooldown. It's a pretty cool ability. But that leads to Thoradin's Might. This is a one rank passive, which will increase our damage dealt by Mortal Strike by 15%. So, let's hit that. And that's going to open up the rest of our traits. There are three Golden Dragon portrait traits. Uh, these are our major traits. We'll talk more about those as we go around. And all the rest are, I'm going to refer to these, by the way, as major traits. These are all minor traits, the ones without the portraits around them. Uh, and they're important, but not as important as these. So let's get started roaming around. Uh, before I do, I do want to mention uh, artifact power costs are going to go up every time you put a point in. Uh, eventually it gets exponentially more expensive, especially uh, after you've hit 110. And you're into like the you know, 10, 12, 14, 16 uh, points into your weapon. You're just, the numbers are going to get massive. So just keep that in mind. Uh, also, I'm going to read these as they are. I'm not going to read them as if they were at max rank. If you want to do that, you know, the percentages are going to be multiplied by whatever the rank is. So you can do that math in your head simple. Okay, Crushing Blows, three rank passive, increasing damage dealt by slam by 5%. Uh, we have Will of the First King, one rank passive. Whirlwind cr Critical Strikes generate one Rage. We have Exploit the Weakness. This is a passive uh, with three ranks. Tactician's Chance to trigger is increased as if you spent 10% more Rage. Uh, and our first major uh, passive here, our first major trait, uh, this is one rank. After using Colossus Smash, your next Mortal Strike or Execute gains 30% increased Critical Strike Chance and deals 30% additional damage. That's pretty fucking awesome. Especially because Colossus Smash can reset. You can really uh, chain together a bunch of big hits if you get, you know, the stars align. Uh, Death Blow, 3 rank passive, increasing the critical strike chance of execute by 5%. We have defensive measures when die, 1 rank passive, by the way. When died by the sword is active, damage taken is reduced by an additional 5%. Uh, here we have one against many. This is a three rank passive. Cleave increases damage dealt by your next whirlwind by an additional two percent for each target hit. Uh, we have touch of Zakaj, three rank passive. Stromkar heals you for three percent of the damage you deal with Mortal Strike. That's pretty awesome. Let's move. Over. Actually, let's go here. Unending Rage, three rank passive, increasing the increasing your match maximum rage by ten. Uh, we'll move over here. Tactical Advantage, 3 rank passive. Uh, when Heroic Leap lands, you gain 10% increased armor and chance to parry for 4 seconds. Here we have Precise Strikes, 3 rank passive. Colossus Smash reduces the rage cost of your next Mortal Strike or Execute by 15%. We have Many Will Fall, 3 rank passive, increasing damage dealt by Whirlwind by 5%. Uh, Focus in Battle, 1 rank passive, increasing damage dealt by Colossus Smash by 25%. Our second major trait, Corrupted Blood of Zakaj, one rank for five seconds after activating Battle Cry. Stromkar radiates shadowy energy, causing all your attacks to deal an additional 20% damage as shadow over six seconds. So you'll get a basically a, a dot. That's pretty cool. Void Cleave, one rank passive. This is our final uh, major trait and our final trait in general. Uh, when Cleave strikes at least three targets, Stromkar releases a burst of Void Energy, dealing 6,729 shadow damage to all nearby enemies. Now, that number may look pretty shit to you, but remember, uh, that's based off of me being level 102 and my eye level, blah, blah, blah. So, that number will go up, you know, at 110, and based off of, I'm guessing, what gear you have, your gear level, the, the item level of the weapon itself, etc., so, uh, we've taken a look at all the major traits, all the minor traits, you can get an idea. Uh, do keep in mind, you know, pick one of these uh, portrait traits out first, because it's going to get really expensive, so I think this is probably the best after looking at them. Either Corrupted Blood of Zakaj or Shattered Defenses is probably the best, so I would, you know, make my way this way, maybe. Yeah, I'd probably, if you were going pure DPS, it looks like the best way would be to come up here, and then come back down this way to get to Corrupted Blood of Zakaj, and then maybe come up to get Focus in Battle, and you put some in Death Blow, and then finish out this side. Uh, but, that's up to you, of course. I don't, I'm not an expert on Warriors by any means, so don't take that as, uh, don't take what I just said as law. You know, you can look it up on, on many websites. Uh, you can see here, too, at the top, we have three available Relic slots. This one, though, is locked for right now. And it will open up when you finish your Warrior Order campaign, which can take you a while depending on how long you play. So uh, if you're a hardcore player, you might be able to open it up within, you know, a week or two weeks of 
of playing at max level. Otherwise, uh, it may take you a little longer than that. But don't worry about that uh, for right now. Uh, but you do have these two slots available to you, and you can put uh, relics in here as soon as you get them, which you get from questing and you get from dungeons, etc., etc. Uh, they're also world drops, too. I mean, a little more rare uh, for them to drop from mobs, but they do. I've seen quite a few of them. So uh, what those do is they add passive item levels to your weapon themselves, and they will also add passive ranks to any of these minor traits. Now, none of the major traits, but the minor traits. So if you have, for instance, three of three crush crushing blows, uh, your iron artifact relic might have uh, plus one to this, and you would get uh, four of four. You would get a fourth rank. So this would go up to 20% uh, as opposed to 15%. Uh, do keep in mind as well, when you put a relic into these slots, they can't come back out when you put something over top of it. It destroys whatever's in that slot. So uh, it's not really that big of a deal when you're leveling, but when you're at 110, it may be a bigger deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. might be a little bit of a bigger deal because you might be making a, you know, a side grade. Oh, this one has 40 item levels, and the one I just got has 40 item levels, but one has a rank in, uh, an extra rank in exploit the weakness, and the other has a rank in one against many, you know, which which is the better one. Uh, I'm not the expert on those things. I can't tell you what, you know, the rankings of these traits, which is the, what's the best one. Uh, you know, I would ask more experienced warriors on either the warrior forums on WoW, if that still exists. I don't know if that still exists. Um, or, you know, Icy Veins or whatever the hell the sites are. I don't, I don't know what all the sites are now. But just keep that in mind. Uh, when you do put something in, in here, the uh, relic that's already in the slot is gone. Uh, you can see there's one here in the top now uh, by the portrait. You can see every time we put a rank into any of these traits, we'll get a number up to 34, and that will give us passive increase in our stamina by 0.75% uh, for each for each uh, rank purchased. So right now we have just about a 1% increase in our, st in our base stamina, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can also see down here at the bottom, we have an appearance tab. So you can take a look and what the different appearances are and how to get them. Uh, recover one pillar of creation, recover light's heart, complete the first major campaign effort with your order, and then you can see these as well. Complete the warrior campaign. And this is where you get, you know, like the major changes uh, for your items. We'll take a quick browse through them. This is Flame Reaper. Pretty badass. And then finally Wrath's Edge. A little undead looking one. That one looks pretty badass. Um, and there's also a hidden artifact appearance, and I think there might be more uh, down the line. But we've taken a look at that. I want to show you this as well. If you shift right click on the item, it'll bring up that UI that we were looking at. The only way to put an artifact power, by the way, is here at the Forge of Odin. That would be the only way for you to actually put a point in any of this, but you could put in relics anywhere in the world. So, uh, you know, as soon as you get them, if it's an upgrade, just open up that, uh, that UI and put it in. Okay? Trying to think if there's anything else. Take a look at this one more time. Pretty badass. Not as a uh, not as awesome as it could have been, I think. But I am uh, on reduced graphical quality, so it may look a lot better uh, for you guys. So that's what that's what the weapon looks like right there. It's pretty badass. I and uh, I think it's pretty cool. That's what it looks like in Avatar. Yeah. Okay. Alright guys, uh, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you did enjoy our quick playthrough of uh, the Arms Warrior campaign here, or the art Artifact Quest. Um, my final words on it are, I'm not thrilled with Arms. Uh, I thought Fury was far more intuitive, at least I felt like I was hitting buttons all the time, even though I was taking a lot more damage than I was uh, in this spec. Maybe it gets better, maybe it gets better as you level up and you put some points into the artifact itself, but... Uh, as of right now, not maybe it was my talents. Maybe you know, if I took more talents, I'd have more to do. But I, I just didn't feel like this was a, a very intuitive spec. I would try Fury out uh, over Arms for sure. But if you're an Arms Warrior fan, uh, you know, play it out. Let me know how it uh, let me know how it works out uh, when you're at max level. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I'll I'll try it out and level as uh, as Arms uh, if if people are you know, thrilled with it at max level. So guys, if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button. Give me that thumbs up. I do appreciate those. Uh, think about hitting the subscribe button as well. Uh, it'll keep you up to date when I do more videos. I've, I have still have plenty more classes to do. I have you know, three other classes, four other classes up already, including my Demon Hunter, which is in my uh, playthrough 
of the Broken Isles, which you can find on my channel as well. Uh, and then it'll just keep you up to date on all of the uh, all of the new stuff. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them down below for me. I do appreciate those as well, and I'll try and respond to them uh, as soon as as soon as I have an opportunity. It's usually pretty quick, but sometimes it could take a day for me to uh, log back on and see that they're there. Uh, but guys, you have a wonderful day or a wonderful evening, depending on where you are in the world, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye-bye now.